Let my people go. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand, let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Moses said, let my people go, if not I'll smite your firstborn dead, let my people go, go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go, no more shall they in bondage toil, let my people go. Passover in Puppet Town. Thank you for all coming here this evening to share this fine Passover Seder with me. It is an honor to open my home to all of you. I know that for many of you it's your first Seder, but don't worry. The tradition of the Seder is to explain all the symbols and rituals as we go along. Just follow along in your Haggadot, the Seder books. As you can hear, my voice is a little sore this evening. My great friend Kesat has joined us to lead the service. You go, Ksat. Thank you, Mutton Chop. And thank you, Rabbi Sackman. We'll begin the Kiddush, the prayer over wine. All right. Wine, 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 booty, booty. And I didn't even need to bring a fake ID. It's grape juice for the kids, rat so. But it's the same prayer. Now we drink the cup of wine leaning on the left side. Check it out. I'm digging the scene with a gangster lean. The next thing we do is each take a piece of parsley. Don't eat it yet. And dip it into the salt water. The vegetable reminds us that our ancestors were tillers of the soil, grateful for its bounty. And the salt water represents the tears of our ancestors, shed when they were slaves. As our door is open, may not only the hungry come, but the spirit of the prophet Elijah, that we may tonight think wisely and feel deeply as we set aside this cup of wine. So who's this Elijah character? And how come he gets wine and I don't? Well, you don't get wine because you're too young. And we leave this cup out for Elijah because he's a great prophet who helps us in times of trouble. He deserves to be welcomed into our celebration. And if you watch closely, maybe he'll drink some of that wine tonight. Well, why don't I just mark the glass and see if he comes by or not? That's not very faithful of you. You were probably a contrary son as a child. Elijah is as real as you and me. I'm sorry. How about I make it up to you by singing my favorite Seder song? The song about the four questions. Please do. Now, let's recite the question in English. Is that Elijah? Maybe. It's open. Come in. Hey, I do 
doing? Mr. Eisen from next door, yay! I thought I'd come by and ask you if I could borrow some matzo and orange juice. Sorry, no OJ, but we've plenty matzo. Take, enjoy. Thank you, Papa Town. I love you. Good night. As I was saying, here's the four questions. Instead of the youngest child reading them, since we're all young at heart, let's go around the table reading. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat either leavened bread or unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is the matzah, right? On this night, why only matzah? On all other nights, we eat any herbs. Why on this night, only bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not dip our herbs, even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? Dip, dip, dippity dip. What makes this world go wrong? That's not one of the questions. Sylvester can't read. Don't feel bad, Sylvester. I feel bad. Good for you. And Spice can't talk, but I'll do this next part. On all other nights, we eat our meals in any manner. On this night, why do we sit around the table together in a reclining position? Here are the answers to the questions. Why don't you start, Serge? We were slaves unto Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Lord our God brought us forth with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. It is therefore our duty from year to year to celebrate this event and to tell the story of Exodus over and over again. Indeed. To dwell and live on the story is a real myth. For the more we talk about it, the better we will understand what a terrible thing slavery is. And we shall then try harder to help achieve freedom for ourselves, for our people, and for people everywhere. The Torah speaks about four sons, one who is wise, one who is contrary, one who is simple, and one who doesn't even know how to ask a question. The wise son asks, What is the meaning of all the rules? and laws and customs which God has commanded us. You shall explain to him all the laws of the Passover. The contrary son asks, What is the meaning of this service to you? What a thing to say. He excludes himself from the group. Tell him plainly, because of what God did for me when I came out of Egypt. Say me and not him, because had he been there, he would not have been redeemed. Ouch! That's what I call tough love. Old Testament style. Does this mean I don't get to eat? What's this role playing, Ratso? The simple son asks. Uh, what is this? You shall say to him, with a strong hand, God brought us out of Egypt from slavery. I was just pretending to be stupid. You don't have to dummy the answer down for me. It's just role playing, Serge. And the son who does not even know how to ask a question, you must begin for him. As it is written, you shall tell your child on this day, this is done because of that which the Eternal did for me when I came out of Egypt. Now, let us tell the story of our ancestors. Long ago, our forefathers, Yosef, son of Yaakov, saved the land of Egypt from a great famine. After Yosef's death, there arose a mean pharaoh. Pharaoh's like a king of Egypt, right? I saw it in a cartoon. Right. This mean Pharaoh forgot about Yosef's health and oppressed and enslaved Israel and forced them to do hard labor under harsh taskmasters. Talk about ungrateful. Oh, it gets worse. To further keep our people down, the mean Pharaoh ordered that all the Jewish baby boys be drowned in the Nile River. Hush. But God did not forget our ancestors. He sent them Moshe, our great leader and liberator, who led them out of Egypt. Our ancestors, Amram, and his wife, Yocheved, had a baby child. And when he became too old to hide, they put him in a basket and laid it in the reeds in the Nile. And there Moshe was found. What happened next was the Pharaoh's daughter found the baby in the reeds and decided to adopt him. Was she mean like her daddy? No, she was a very nice girl. So Moshe grew up in the Pharaoh's court and grew strong and wise. And in addition to his Egyptian teachings, he learned the language and culture of his true Jewish heritage. And he saw the suffering of his enslaved people, but he didn't know what to do. 
Then God called upon Moshe and commanded him to plead with him that slavery was wrong, that Pharaoh should let the Jews leave the land of Egypt. You can't let it. And then Moshe warned Pharaoh that if he didn't let his people go, a series of terrible plagues would befall the Egyptians. But still, Pharaoh ignored Moshe's plea. Stupid Pharaoh. Ten horrible plagues befell the Egyptians. The Seder tradition is to dip your finger in your wine or grape juice and spill a drop on your plate as each one is mentioned. Let's say the plagues together. Blood, Blood rock, rock, burning, burning beef, beef, pestilence, forest, hail, locust, darkness, slaying of the firstborn. Wait a minute. I understand the boils and blood and locusts, but what is so plagueful about a frog? A frog is a good thing. Well, I'm sure if they were having just one nice, polite frog come over for dinner like this, it would be okay. But there were thousands of frogs everywhere, falling out of their cabinets, eating all their food. It was bad for the frogs, too. People couldn't walk around without smooshing them. I still don't like being called a plague. What happened next was... Is that Elijah? I don't think so. Come in. Hi, everybody. Here comes Bobby Khan, the 11th plague. That's so... That's not so nice. Come on, Ratso, what's your problem? You just irked me, that's all. Well, I love you, Ratso. And I write a song about the plagues that I thought you'd all like to hear. And I'm here to perform it. Well, that's very nice of you, Bubbler. Don't you think so, Ratso? I guess. Why don't you stand over there in the disco room so we can all see you, okay, Bobby? Wow, I didn't know you had a disco room, Rabbi. Why so shocked? Is there something in the Talmud against doing the hustle? Take it away, Bobby! A one, a two, a one, two, three. Well, old Moses, he came down from the mountain. He said to the Pharaoh, set my people free. And the Pharaoh said, no. I, I like your Jews as slaves, I like you as living in my little caves And Moses said, God, oh, what can be done? And God just said, I'm a bush, I'm a bush But I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna send some plagues on you A plague of frogs, a plague of bricks, a plague of sticks, a plague of
before I ever called him a plague. Nice attitude adjustment, Ratso. So here's what happened after all those plagues. The Pharaoh said, rise up and get forth from among my people. You and the children of Israel, go quickly. And they went quickly. They didn't even have time to make food. They just made bread dough and carried it in pans on their heads and let it cook in the sun. That's using their heads. So they did get away? No thanks to Pharaoh. He sent his army after them. And then, one of the most famous parts of the story, God helped our ancestors get across the Red Sea by parting the waters. But after they got across and the Pharaoh's army followed them, the waters returned and drowned them. Whoa, that's deep. At the beginning of the story, Moses is supposed to get drowned, but he doesn't. And then at the end, it's the Pharaoh's people who do get drowned. They flip the script. That's an amazing tale. When I Go ahead. The Israel brought us forth in Egypt with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs of wonder. Thank you. Thank you, Tiger. Now we thank God for all he did for us during Exodus. Does anyone know what Dayenu means? Isn't that the princess who died? That was so sad. No, that's Diana. Is it a government with two joint rulers? No, that's Diarchy. Is it the side of a right triangle opposite the right angle? No, that's the hypotenuse. And I don't even know where you got that from. Dianu means it would have been enough for us. So after each of us reads a great thing he did, everyone can say Dianu. Had he brought us out from Egypt and not executed judgment against them. Dianu. Had he executed judgment against them and not done justice to their idols. Dianu. Dianu. Had he given us their property and not divided the sea for us? Had he divided the sea for us and not brought us through it dry shod? Had he brought us through it dry shod and not drowned our oppressors in it? Had he drowned our oppressors in it and not helped us 40 years in the desert? Had he helped us 40 years in the desert and not fed us mana? Had he fed us manna and not given us the Sabbath? Dayenu! Dayenu! Enough already! Is it time to eat you? Not yet, young friend. In the voice of Rabbi Gamliel, whoever does not explain the three symbols of the Seder and Passover has not fulfilled his duty. First of all, the Passover offering. On the Seder plate, the Passover offering is represented by the roasted lamb shank. Bah! Why are you crying, mutton chop? That might be my mommy. Bah! Don't cry, mud and chop. You just saw your mommy an hour ago. We brought this last week. And this is only symbolic. We're not going to eat any lamb tonight. Okay. And no frogs? No. No frogs. And no tiger? No. And no tigers either. I don't really have to ask, do I? The second symbol is matzah. Hey, that's like the dry bread they made on their backs when they were booking out of Egypt. Exactly. That's why we only eat unleavened bread during Passover. Finally, the third symbol is the bitter herbs represented by horseradish on the Seder plate. They represent how the Egyptians embittered their slaves' lives with hard labor. Now we've come to the home stretch. A few more prayers and the feast begins. Now... We all get some matzah, but don't eat it yet. Now we say the prayer over the matzah. <laughs> 
Now you can eat the matzo. Now we take some bitter herbs called moora and combine them with the sweet chorosis. This represents bitter slavery and the sweetness of God's redemption. How sweet it is. Indeed. Now, you can eat some. Ooh, bitter. Mmm, sweet. That, my friends, is the Seder. The feast is now served. Excellent. I'll be right back. That's gotta be Elijah. No, it's Schlenka, our favorite klezma band. Would you like to join us for the Seder? We just finished our Seder. We'd like to play some music for you. Well, we're just about to eat, but we'd love some dinner music. Head on over to the disco room. The meal is served. Delicious. And now one of my favorite traditions, the finding of the Afi Coleman. What? Huh? When I slipped away before the meal, I hid it. Now the children get to look for it. Since we can't finish the Seder without it, whoever finds it gets a, to bargain with the adults to get it back. You mean the kids don't have to give it back unless you give us something we want? Even cash money? Maybe a few pieces of guilt. Maybe some chocolate, we'll see, but no haggling till you find it. Now to be safe, each child go with a goblin. Bo, you go with Serge. Creeper, you take Ratso. Buh, you take Spike. Dom, you team up with Sylvester. It's me for you and you for me. Any hint where it's at? It is in the Milky Way galaxy. Good luck.
Avi, 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 coming, yeah. Avi, 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 coming, yeah. We've been searching high and low, man. Got to find the avi, coming. Can't finish to say the show, man. Without that blessing, avi, coming. Avi, 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 coming, yeah. Bye. 